Hello, Calm Parents. Welcome back to another episode of Parenting Teens with Dr. Cam. I'm your host, Dr. Cam. And today I'm talking with men's coach, David Maxwell. David coaches men on how to live a life with purpose and passion using his 4A preparatory process. He spent the last 25 years helping young men and teenagers feel confident in who they are and the decisions they make. He has been speaking in front of small and large audiences for over 30 years and hosts the Confident Man podcast, all on major podcast platforms. He's also a dad of two. So welcome, David. I am so happy to have you here. Hey, Dr. Cam. Glad to be here. I appreciate it. Glad to say good morning to your audience out there. Yeah. And just a little back back this David and I know each other. We went hiking in the hills of Utah and Vegas yep. for a conference. So, yep. um, I hiking. have, yeah. So I was so impressed with everything that you have to offer and what you teach and your story and really wanted you to come on because I, I feel like you can add a lot of just power and encouragement to dad specifically, which I feel yeah. like they, they kind of get the short end of the stick a lot of times. So I'm glad to have you here. So David, tell us a little bit about how you got started on being a man's coach. Well, it came out of my journey. Um, when my son was born uh, over 25 years ago, I had that realization. Uh, one, I don't know how to be a dad, which I think every parent goes through that. But for me, I, I didn't know how to be a man. Um, my, my parents divorced when I was young and my dad lived two states away. And this was back when, you know, you only had one phone and it didn't have any video or anything. So yeah. keeping up was, was a little different back then. And so I grew up in that way <clears throat> and then figuring out how to be a man was just something I didn't know. Uh, so I was kind of playing games, kind of acting like what I thought was supposed to be a man. And so on my journey, I learned what all that meant. And so what I want to do now is help men make that journey a little quicker than I did. Mm. Uh, the fatherlessness in our society today, I think, is huge. And I think a lot of dads grew up without a dad. And they're just like, am I doing this right? How do I do this? So I want to help them learn how to be men and how to be dads. Because to me, they're interrelated. Uh, the better you are as a man, the more confident you are as a man, the better dad you'll be. Oh, that's so that's so true. And I, I know a lot of dads, particularly when their kids become teenagers, particularly mm -hmm. when their daughters become teenagers, um, struggle on how to show up. And I think, like you said, I think that's really interesting that a lot of us, a lot of them grew up without dads, even though dad was there. Dad yeah, wasn't yeah. present and dad wasn't involved. Yeah. And I think a lot of dads now want to be involved. They don't know how. So, yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of dads, that? they get into that there and they kind of go with whatever the latest, whatever is, you know, oh, I heard my friend said this, or I saw this on YouTube. So instead of having that inner confidence themselves of, I know my child, I know how to connect with my child, which does take time, but they can do that because every child is unique. So, so a dad who, who applies a one solution fits all is not going to do that well. Because, you know, your first child, your middle child, your third child, however many children you have, they're different. Mm -hmm. And so you really have to become a student of your child. And a lot of men don't have the emotional capacity to do that because they can't even be a student of themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you say, hey, what do you feel? I feel hungry. You know, they, they can't express their own feelings. So how can they connect empathy wise with a 14 year old girl whose emotions go up and down every day. Yeah. It scares them. <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> does. And, 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 and they, they, they come from the perspective of what did I think of when I was a teenage boy? And so they're scared. And so then there's that part of them that has that guilt of man, am I having to pay for being such a bad teenager myself? And, and, and so there's all these emotions running through them. Um, but the kids just want them. You know, the kids want them to just be themselves, to, to love them, to, to be a man who knows who he is. That, that's so huge uh, to kids. They don't need you to be perfect. They just need you to be you. And kids I think you a don't lot of want them, you to be perfect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because if you're perfect, then, then they're going to have a benchmark they can't reach. Yeah. And they'll be like, well, I'm not perfect. So I guess I'm not going to be like that. 
Yeah, I think um, I actually have talked to a lot of teenagers, boys and girls, but mostly girls I get this from too, who have actually said, I hate my dad. Yeah. And when you dig in, I, I learn that and they learn that they don't actually hate their dad. They love their dad. They hate the way their dad makes them feel because they feel rejected. Yeah. So yeah, tell us. I, well, to me, the thing that's interesting is I help men learn how to kind of own their own attitudes. And, and the reason I do that is because if men don't know how to really know themselves, then their ability to relate emotionally is hindered. Mm -hmm. And so that usually when your children are little, that doesn't really bother you that much because they're little. But as they begin to grow into teenage years, the reason people are scared of teenage years is a lot of men don't know how to connect relationally in an emotional way. They like to serve. I fix problems. I do this. I do that. And that's great. That's, that's kind of part of who we are. But we have to learn to connect emotionally. It doesn't mean you have to be that emotional. It doesn't mean, mean men have to cry and all that. I don't care if they do that. But men feel deeply. And if men can grab a hold of that feeling, then they're able to connect with their children more because they can relate to them. And so what happens is a child becomes a teenager, especially our daughters, they, they, their emotions are up and down based on the day. And what a dad does is he can't relate. So he blames the child. Oh, my kid's just emotional. It's their fault. And so I think the children pick up on that, that we're blaming them for a lot of times what's our own stunted growth. And, and so I tell men, I said, it doesn't mean you have to sit in a circle and share feelings and stare at your belly button, but you got to know how to relate because one, you'll have a better marriage and you'll have a better relationship with your children. You don't stop being a dad. This is just an aspect of being a dad that makes you better. So how do you do that? <laughs> like just one step. How do you do that? Yeah, to me, it's, it's getting guys to even begin asking questions. I, I did a Facebook Live the other day and I, I talked to, to guys about, went to a doctor from my father-in-law and um, she just sat there and for 15 minutes just asked question after question after question after question. And I thought, you know, we don't ask ourselves questions mm -hmm. as men because we're doing. Men are doers. Give me a project. Give me a goal. I'm going to do it. And that's, that's the way we're made up. That's our, our nature. But if we never sit back and contemplate, why do I do this? And I think for a lot of men, it's just even starting with, what's my purpose? Why am I here? Am I here just to make money, to mow the grass and pay bills? Is that really a purpose in life? And if men never ask those questions, I think they never begin that process of digging deep. Like for me, I didn't, my parents divorced when I was nine years old. I didn't know how to process that, how to even think about it as a child, of course. So I just kind of boxed it away. Well, I was 30 when I was even given the tools to process it. Hmm. I didn't even know how to do it. And then there was painful things that happened in my life that I didn't know what to do with. So I just shoved them to the back of my brain. Well, a lot of men have all this stuff in their brain and they don't know how to process through it. And I think it's beginning to ask questions to think, okay, when that person, you know, was a bully to me when I was nine, 10, that probably affected me. And I think men have to bring those things up and kind of deal with them. It may mean journaling. It may mean going and getting what I call a, a mental or emotional coach, which is counseling, but you know, that's really what it is. And I think guys who are willing to do that, show their kids, show their wives, I'm willing to dig what I call the inner journey, because that's the hardest one for men. We can do the outward journey. We can climb a mountain. We can do all this stuff. But that inward journey is the one many guys fear, and they don't even want to start. No, and I, I feel like even now, our society still makes it a stigma for men to even be in touch with their emotions or, you know, I feel like we raise our boys to ignore that at the detriment of our boys. Yeah, I think it's, well, we get the extremes. We either tell boys don't feel or all they do is feel. 
So, so we don't teach men the balance of, like you look throughout history, men who've changed the world were men who were doers, but also men who connected with their own passions, mm -hmm. you know, and, and men who can connect with their own passions in a positive way and understand this is why I feel so strongly. They're the men who get a lot of things done. And sometimes guys are like, why can't I be successful? Why can't I go to that next level? It's because they're not really connecting with their own passions. And that's what I, I want men to see that you don't have to be, our society gives men two options. You know, you're Dwayne The Rock Johnson, you can beat everybody up and you look swole. Or you're Ryan Gosling, you can dance, play the piano and cry in the rain and quote poetry. You know, and most men are like, I I'm neither one of those. <laughs> no. So, so. But that's a lot of times our society only gives guys those options. Mm -hmm. You either be a meathead and beat people up or you be so emotional that you can't get anything done. Yeah. And, and I think that's where we've seen the extreme. So men are like, I'm just not even going to do either. And it's like, no, 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 no. You have passions. You're, you can be a strong man who also knows what he feels. Yeah. And that just opens you up to have those connections with your family with your kids that need yeah. it and are craving it from you. Well, and, and the deeper relationships come through emotional connections. Mm -hmm. And that's what a lot of, a lot of men don't really understand. They think, well, me and my wife are good, but do you have a deep relationship? Do you have a deep relationship with your kids? I mean, you really connect with them. You know them. It doesn't mean everything's perfect. It doesn't mean everything's going to go perfect, but a deep emotional connection means that that relationship is stronger. It's more than a physical relationship. It's more than, you know, you're my child. You're going to do what I say. It's, a, it's that connection that I think a lot of people are, well, what's missing? That's what's missing. Yeah. A lot of people just don't know how to have that deep connection with another person. So one of the ways to really have a deep connection is through listening. And I love how you call listening. It is like, <laughs> what do you say? Yeah, I call listening as a full contact sport. Because yeah. um, for a lot of men, listening is, okay, I'm going to sit here and listen. Tell me what you want to say. Okay, I'm good. And that's, that's not full contact. Full contact means it's back and forth. So I tell men that listening is active. It means you're showing interest. You're asking questions. Um, you're challenging even. You know, if, if your child comes up to you at 15 and says, I'm going to be a singer, I want to sing, you know, a loving dad is one who's like, okay, wow, you want to sing. That's great. Um, well, let's, let's talk about the fact that you're kind of tone deaf. Do you think that'll be a problem? You know, that's not being a jerk because some dads would be like, what? You can't sing. And they just shut it down. Where if you in a loving way say, well, what about this problem? Have you ever thought about maybe you should go into the music business industry? Since you can't sing that well, maybe you could produce. Maybe you, you know, and they, they give options. That's active listening. And that's what we have to do is understand that listening is not just sitting there on your phone going, uh-huh, uh-huh. And that's what a lot of people think listening is. You know, let me, they almost look at it as prison. You know, oh, my wife wants to tell me what she really thinks. Okay, let me do my 15 minutes of prison. And I'll be like, okay, I understand you, you know, where uh, love is an action and it's that full contact to, mm -hmm. well, what do you mean by that? Why do you feel that way? What do you think that means? And when we do that to our children, what we're doing is we're showing that we actually respect their opinion. When you ask a child a question that's, that's part of what they're sharing with you, what you're showing them is I'm actually really listening and I'm interested in what you're saying. Now, we all know at 13, 14, 15, you know, this week they want to be an astronaut. Next week they want to be a rock star. The next week they want, and that's fine mm -hmm. because they don't really remember so much what you said. It's the fact that you were willing to go, that would be awesome. I think you'd make a great astronaut. And then the next week when they want to be a chef, you, you know, you could do that. They hear you listening and they hear you challenging, that means you're actively engaged with them. That's the key. Yeah. That's the part that I think a lot of people don't get. They think listening is just putting your time in, but it's actually going that back and forth with them 
and helping them because that's how we teach kids to critically think. It's a parent's job to teach them to critically think. And we do that by asking questions, not in a jerky, I'm older than you, I know more than you. And yeah, you do know more than them. But when you ask a question with empathy, go, well, man, tell me, you want to be a chef. Okay, well, tell me how that works since you only eat chicken nuggets. You eat nothing else. How are you going to be, a you know, and you don't have to say it jerky like that. You can say, well, tell me, are you willing to try new foods? Do you want to experiment? Why don't we start doing that? You know, and there's ways you can involve yourself without going, what? You can't be a chef. You only eat cereal. You know, and that's, that's where the active side of it comes in. And that's what I think a lot of men have to learn how to get involved in that way. And that's why I call it full contact, because I think that's a mental image they can get. Of it's the back and forth of action. That's what listening is all about. I love that so much. And I think the other thing that I see a lot too is, you know, my teen doesn't listen to me. And I I hear a lot of my teen doesn't listen to me. And there's a lot of one way talking and they get upset when their teen's not listening, but they're not demonstrating or modeling or showing how to listen because they don't listen to their teen. So if you want your teen to listen to you, you have to first teach them how by listening to them. Yeah. And questions are one of the best way to show someone you are listening, where if you ask a question about what they're talking about, that means, Hey, I'm listening to you. Tell me more about that. And then they go, Oh, wow. They're really listening. They're not just playing a game with me. Right. And just waiting their time. Yeah. So, and and you earn the right to be heard. The more you listen, the more you can speak. That's a good point. So you got to put in your time. So I know too, a lot of um, what I pull from parenting is actually from leadership. And I would love for you to kind of share some of your things, because I think particularly, and and this is, I don't want this to sound sexist either, because it's not, but I think because of the emotional part that, that women tend to bring to it, the men relate more to when I bring in the leadership part. Because that they're yeah. like, okay, that I feel confident that I get. So what are some pieces of like leadership that you can tie to parenting? Yeah, to me, the leadership aspect, one, as a dad, I tell men, the better you lead yourself, the better you dad you'll be. And so what I tell men is it starts with their own self-growth. I ask men, how are you growing as a man? What are you doing to become better? And kids, our wives, our relationships, they see that. So if you have areas that you're working on, like let's say a dad who doesn't exercise and his health is not that great, but then he starts, okay, I'm going to start walking. I'm going to start doing these things. And he starts taking better care of himself. What he's just done is he's been an example to the family of, When there's an area in your life that's not great, you can work on it and help get it better. But it's hard. It takes work. You've just taught a lesson that your children see, and you didn't say a word. And it starts with men leading themselves. I think the more a man can lead himself and grow as a man, the better dad he'll be just automatically. Because then he has the, the emotional, the physical capital to speak that into his kid's life. Because they've seen dad go, you know what? I needed help. So I went to a trainer who helped me learn how to exercise better. So then when he goes to them and says, hey, why don't you go talk to the counselor at school and they can help you maybe figure out what areas might be a good major for you when you go to college. Well, they've they've been an example of that. So their child's like, well, you know, dad went and got help. I'm going to go get some help. And I think that's the thing that we sometimes forget that they are watching us. And a lot of parents think, well, I told them what to do. Yeah, but you didn't show them what to do. They're Mm -hmm. not seeing it in your life. If you just sit in a chair and recline and watch Netflix all day, but then tell them they should be productive, they should do this, they should do that, but they don't see you doing it, it's going to fall on deaf ears. Uh, it's actually going to create resentment too. Cause it's yeah. like, why are you telling me I have to do all this when you're not, you're not doing yeah. it. And I, even I then with, 
I was going to say with some men, it's, it's also leading is involving themselves individually with their children to where, like I said earlier, each child is different. And so I tell dads to help them understand it. You're like a chef who's cooking a meal for each person. The way you love, the way you connect is different for every child because every child has different ways of connecting. So a chef figures out what you like and makes a meal according to what you like. Dads connect with their children by understanding what their children are into and getting into that with them. Um, wow. Even if you're not particularly that into it, if you show interest in it, it's huge. It's huge. Yeah, I, I remember I met a um, dad waiting um, after after a Broadway show. So we're you know we're waiting at the backstage door, and it was late, and it was cold, and we're waiting, and he's there with his son, and I, I asked him, I go, so are you really into Broadway? And he's like, no, but, you know, I don't love Broadway, but I love my son. Yeah. And I mean, it was not a fun day to be standing out. And so um, that just really hit me because he's sitting there and he's taking his son to Broadway and waiting out in the cold, not because he likes it, but because his son likes it. And that's his connection. And I was like, I'll be telling that story. I know. I know. I know. (laughs) And that's and that's the thing. It's it's huge because a lot of dads. They have the areas that there's, that's their favorite, but that may not necessarily be your child's favorite. Yeah. And let's say you have one child who is into sports and you are into sports. Well, that's an easy win for you. But if you have a child who's into music and you don't know much about music, you're going to have to do more work to connect with them or what you'll communicate to them is, I kind of like the sport child better than you. And oh, you won't yeah. mean that. You'll say, oh, I don't feel that way. Yeah, but that's a lot of times what gets communicated. Yeah. So you want to you want to learn. And even if that means having to learn things you didn't know, you know, or getting your child to explain it to you. That's the beauty of it. Uh, one of the easiest ways to connect with teenagers, I worked with them for so long. They don't talk much a lot of times until you hit on their area of interest. Yes. And so what you do is you develop questions to find out what are they into and then you let them teach you. And boy, you talk about vocally, they'll go from not saying a word to almost you want them to stop talking (laughs) because they'll tell you everything about it. (laughs) Yeah. And it's just, it's one of those things that you do. And then if they find out that you're into what they're into, uh, like I like anime. And so I'll watch it. Well, a lot of, a lot of young people out there watch anime today. So I'll, whenever I'm speaking to someone, their students, I'll mention something about anime and you talk about who comes and talks to me after I talk. A lot of the teenagers do. Yeah. They want to, hey, what's your favorite show? What's this? What's that? And we'll get into a conversation. And I don't know as much as they do. So I let them teach me stuff. Mm-hmm. And those people are my fans. Yep. Oh, 100%. That is that is exactly the way to, to connect with any teen. And it's amazing because they all have something yeah, that they're they really passionate about. A lot of times we mistakenly put down the very things that they're into, which is what shuts them down too. So being being interested in is a key thing. So I think right there is a really good tip for the parents and the dads out there that are like, okay, this sounds great, but I do not know where to begin. Like yeah. I have not been there like that. I that I think my team would probably fall over backwards if I suddenly showed interest that way because I've never had that. So what is a good way for, for dads to kind of take that first step? Yeah, I think the first step, one, you got to be careful because men tend to be an all or nothing thing. Yeah. So we're the type that, okay, it's the first of the year. I'm going to lose weight. So I'm going to go on a diet where I eat, you know, 15 eggs a day. I'm going to run 30 miles and they do all this in one week and they kill themselves. And I think relationally, we do the same thing. I want to have a better marriage. So I'm going to go buy flowers. I'm going to write poems. I'm going to do this. I'm going to connect to my kids. So I'm going to, and so we kind of overwhelm them and they're not used to it. So what I tell men to do is just take one step at a time with your kids. If you don't have a relationship with them, if it's not that great, just begin doing one thing to get a better relationship. Ask them a question. 
even if you have to prepare questions ahead of time, even if you have to have a list of questions on your phone, and then start observing. If you observe, you can see what they're into. You know, hey, tell me more about this. A question like that, even if they're like, why do you want to know? I'm just curious. What is that? What are you, what are you into that? Or get them to help you with something. That to me is one of the easiest mm -hmm. ways to start a relationship to where, hey, you're really good with your phone. I stink at my phone. Can you show me some of that cool stuff you do? And you're not being, oh, phones are dumb. You're dumb because you're on your phone all the time. What if you got them to help you with your phone? Well, then they feel like you really want my help. Yeah, I think you're better at that than I am. That's huge. So just little things like that can begin that back and forth. And then you just continue it from there. And I tell dads, become a student of your child, even if you have to take notes, even if you have a special note on your phone where you write down things that they're into, do it because that's going to show them how much you care. Oh, I love that. That's fantastic. And yes, asking your teen for help is one of the best ways to build that connection, build up their self-confidence, build up their trust in you. It doesn't make you look less authoritative, you know, like less confident. It makes you look more competent because you're willing to go to them and ask questions. So I, I yeah. love that so much. Um, so David, how do people find you? Uh, they can find me at uh, davidthemaxwell.com. That's my website. It's David, T-H-E, Maxwell. Um, that's my website. And then uh, my podcast is the Confident Man Podcast. It's on all the platforms. Um, and I'm, I've got something. Uh, I did a webinar for dads uh, back before Father's Day that I've set to repeat for your audience um, that they can watch. It's a free webinar for dads, anyone who wants to watch it. If they go to theconfidentdad.me, it's a free webinar they can sign up for. It. Um, and that's something I just want to do for the members of your audience. So I'm not really advertising it to anybody else, but you guys can get on there. It's theconfidentdad.me and sign up and watch the free webinar for dads. And a lot of these tips are in that webinar. Excellent. And I have a link. I will have the links everywhere. I think that's super good. I'm going to watch it because I love having more tips like that as well. So any parting words of encouragement, particularly for dads with teenagers? Yeah, for me as a dad, just keep at it. It's, it's don't be scared of teenagers. They're not scary creatures. They're not aliens. Um, I think sometimes people who actually work with families kind of push that narrative. Oh, well, the teen years. And you can enjoy the teen years. Uh, you can enjoy your kids at every age. The thing you want to do, though, is if you've messed up and maybe you don't have a great relationship, just start now. Even if your child is 16, by the time they're 18, you can have a better relationship with them. So instead of wasting the next two years regretting what you did for the first 16, just take the time right now to say, okay, I want to be a better dad to them. And just start one step at a time making those things happen. And you won't regret it. You no, won't regret it. You won't at all. And your teen will definitely thrive and benefit from it. Yeah, no problem. So amazing. Thank you, David. I am so grateful you could join us today. Anytime, Dr. Cam. I had a blast. I did too. And thank you, parents, for taking time out of your busy day to spend with us. If you want more about how to help your teen succeed, feel free to grab my free guide, Seven Secrets to Motivating Teens at AskDrCam.com slash Motivate Teens. And if you enjoyed this episode and the helpful strategies David shared with us, please take a quick moment to rate and review. This helps other parents like you find the show. I encourage you to share it with a friend as well. Until next time, have a peaceful, positive, calm day.